I love helping other people. I've always had coaches myself coming from quite a heavy um, sporting background or um, to be more specific, um, strength training background. I've always had a coach. I've always had mentors mm -hmm. um, and I love helping others. I love helping others um, succeed. Mm -hmm. um, and I know to truly succeed, you do need a coach. You're listening to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. Investor Tales, stories from the front yard where I get to speak to property investors from all around Australia about their investing journey. My name is Louise Carr and I'm one of the coaches here at Positive Real Estate where we help people build wealth through property. With over 8,000 clients across Australia and New Zealand, there's some incredible stories to tell, which hopefully make your investing journey that little bit easier and will inspire you along the way. So my guest today is the fabulous Michelle Fisher, and we discuss her background. Um, she's got a fascinating background and uh, one that a lot of you, um, I'm sure, will enjoy learning. So Michelle is, grew up in the Housing Commission in Western Sydney um, with single mum and brother. Um, and being a Maltese family, they really connected, um, you know, her family and culture. Their uncle encouraged them to pull their resources together. Um, and and certainly change their their financial outcome and gesture. So Michelle talks about that, um, how she went from living in housing commission and growing that, and some of the lessons that she learnt along the way um, to to be where she is today, um, and certainly a multi millionaire um, and even a multi million dollar portfolio across Australia as well. So there's challenges, um, there's challenges that we can overcome with guidance. Um, and so enjoy this conversation with Michelle. I'm sure you will find it, find it very fascinating as well. Hey everyone, welcome to today's podcast. My name is Louise Carr. I'm one of the senior coaches here at Positive Real Estate. Um, it's a coaching and mentoring team. And today I have my lovely colleague, Michelle. Um, Michelle Fisher is here to join us and share some of her, her story and background as well. So welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Pleasure, pleasure. Nice to be here. <laughs> Thanks for, for getting on, on record, so to speak, and um, and socially we've chatted um, over time, so I know you've got some great stories and great wealth of knowledge to share, so thank you for, for offering your time and wisdom um, as well. Sure, sure. No problem. Story. <laughs> So look, it's great to have you, and I'll get straight into it. Um, for those of you that haven't met you yet, can you tell me a little bit about your background um, and your your professions um, before your your life before PRE, so to speak? <laughs> oh, so so life before um, positive real estate. Well, I've been in the coaching space um, for about seventeen years, um, coaching with health and wellness before mm -hmm. entering into the property space. Um, so so. Pretty much most of my adult life has been in the coaching realm. Yeah, coaching mentoring. Yeah. yeah. And what do you love most about the the coaching side? Why are you drawn to to coaching people so so much? Good question. Um, I just I love I love helping other people. I've always had coaches myself, coming from quite a heavy um, sporting background or. Um, to be more specific, um, strength training background. I've always had a coach. I've always had mentors mm -hmm. um, and I love helping others. I love helping others um, succeed. Mm -hmm. um, and I know to truly succeed, you do need a coach um, mm -hmm. and a mentor. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. So is it fair to say what you've done in your fitness side, you've applied to your professional, like definitely. your business and investment as well? Yeah, yeah definitely. Look, um, obviously different, um, One's health and fitness and, and the other is property. But again, you know, it comes down to um, the strategy, the planning, setting goals, you know, small goals, large goals, um, and then looking at ways to, to approach that and achieve, achieve what you set out to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So we'll touch on that today um, as well. And aside from fitness and property, uh, what else do you like to do in your personal life? Want to tell us a little bit about Michelle? <laughs> about me? Um, well, I'm a mother. I've got um, two young boys, um, 10 and 12 years of age. Um, we all love the outdoors. So getting outdoors is a big, big part of um, what we do on the weekends. Um, mm -hmm. 
I love that. Uh, love cooking, <laughs> love eating as well. <laughs> um, eating and love, training. What's that? Sorry. Eating and training. That's right. That's why we train so we can eat. <laughs> um yeah definitely love my health um love reading love investing in my own personal growth um so a very big advocate of education and investing in yourself to be a better version of yourself yeah. um and I, and I like to sort of share that that wisdom with my kids as well and with others of course yeah perfect are they yeah. still listening to you I guess they haven't got to the teenage years yet so they're probably yeah, they're still listening still yeah I'm still bribing them <laughs> I'm bribing them, you know, they've got, uh, like with savings, I keep on saying you've got to save for your properties yeah. and I've got, they've got their savings accounts and, um, yeah, and they sort of earn money each week and they put money away for investing and, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, teach them yeah. young. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Teach them young, for sure. Um, okay, so what has been your experience with property um, prior to joining joining Positive as a coach? Well, tell us a little bit about your your property background and your how did you get into investing in property? What sparked your interest in that? Um, good question. Uh, I guess from a from a young age, I wasn't brought up in a in a affluent area at all. Um, I was brought up just by my mum with my mum mm -hmm. and my brother. Um, so we were living in a housing estate actually. Mm -hmm. from when I was born um, and mum always taught me how to save very well um, we did have quite a few of my um, uncles who had a big influence on my life and they were investing in property mm -hmm. um, so I sort of took a bit of a shine to what they were doing um, so at the age of 21 both myself and my brother and my mum we sort of saved <laughs> worked about three jobs saved and bought an investment or my, actually you know my mum's first property for her together Mm -hmm. um, and then we use that as a bit of leverage to buy our first investment property, the three of us together, my mum, my brother and myself. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I started it at the age of 21. Yeah, beautiful. So you all pulled your resources together yeah. to help. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So not your normal 21-year-old. I wasn't going out on Friday night. So it was, um, <laughs> yeah, like two different jobs um, and so saving as much as I could for the deposit. Yeah, yeah, good on you, yeah. And whereabouts did you grow up in um, with your mum? So what area? In uh, Western Sydney. Western Sydney, yep. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. 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 So I'm sure you've seen that transform a lot over the last 20 years or so since you were... Look, I haven't been back for over 20 years, uh, yeah. but definitely Western Sydney has definitely transformed. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So what was your... And like you said, you're probably the one serving the drinks rather than or you know, looking <laughs> after the people rather than being yeah. on the side yeah. of the bar, which is very, I'm sure your mum was very proud. Of yes. <laughs> yeah, she was. Age. But yes. like, what was your main um, motivation? Is it fair to say that it was really about, you know, your mum and getting ahead or was there, you know, some extra, you know, um, might, something else going on for your family at the time or what were you, what were you working towards? Uh, yeah, I um, look. I always knew from from watching my mum. I mean, she sort of worked about three jobs herself. Um, you know that you couldn't sort of save yourself wealthy. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I started to recognise early on. Um, you know, I was in my twenties when I was sort of purchasing investment books and trying to get it, my head around investing and the benefit of investing. And I, and I soon realised at quite a young age that um, investing was going to be that that vehicle for myself um, to, to be able to earn the income that I was after um, mm -hmm. and not just relying on, you know, trading time for money all, all the time. Yeah. 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 Um, so essentially before that, um, was it, how did, you know, how did your first investing experiences go? Um, so you got your mum sorted, you pulled all your resources yep. I got bought a property for her and yep. then is it you and your brother invested separately is that correct or... so so we invested again the three of us and we bought an apartment in um again western sydney or Parramatta in sydney mm -hmm. uh, a little small apartment block i think there are about 10 apartments um mm -hmm. and we actually to save money we actually um cleaned all the common areas did all the lawns mm -hmm. um Look, I guess at the time you don't really know what's a good asset or not. If it's if it's the right location, I did you know no research at all. It was just someone said, "Look, buy something." Um, I think for memory it was about. I think it cost us about a. Oh, 
it was about 170,000 we paid for it mm-hmm. um, at the time. Um, look, I know it wasn't the best quality asset, um, but it was a start. You know, it was mm-hmm. a bit of a stepping stone um, property. Um, yeah. Yeah, got you on the ladder. and Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think you appreciate too with the first investment if you if you're not educated, you don't realize the costs associated with investing. Um, so that was a big learning curve for me, learning through my experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. At least you got the foot in the door. And then where did you go from there? Um, what was your tell us a little about your journey and your investment decisions? I can think certainly back in the back in the day, not that you're as old as what I am, but you know, it's quite common just to, to buy something and hope that it's yeah. going to be- yeah, yeah, yeah. Make some mistakes, but just get your foot in the ladder. So that's good. You did that. Yes. But what did you learn along the way, and what would you, you know, I guess, what advice would you would you offer, or wish you did could do differently? I think there's about three questions in one, but I hope. Yeah. You- <laughs> I think it's um not being afraid to ask the questions and and um not yeah not being fearful to ask questions because I was always fearful that I'm asking a silly question um because then I went on to purchase another property and just with my mum and myself so Mm -hmm. this was the second investment Mm -hmm. um again that that wasn't a great asset um it was about 40 years old it was in another uh, western Sydney again um in a Mount Druitt um so a lower socioeconomic area Mm -hmm. um I learned from that one that um you know those type of areas or that area, um, the tenants sort of trashed the property quite a bit. So that was another steep learning curve. Um, mm-hmm. Sorry, I lost, lost track of the question you asked. Um, oh, just what you would do differently. Um, oh, what I would do differently. I think I would, uh, yeah, again, I, I would not be afraid to ask why this property is going to work for, for me or for us at the time, you yeah. know, why this works or why it doesn't work. Mm. Um, and I guess because all three of us didn't really have a clue to be honest we just thought we've got the funds let's buy something Mm -hmm. naturally everything um, appreciates in value um, and 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 so we bought it Um, I would have probably yeah asked more questions around why you know Mm -hmm. why are we buying this investment because funny enough at the time um, we looked at another property my mum and myself in um, the lower north northern suburbs in Sydney same price point <laughs> yeah so yeah. I kick myself all the time that we it was exactly the same same price point um or maybe a little bit more but um yeah it literally was a street away mm. from a little, from a little little beach I can't remember the, the name of the beach but it was in in Mossman okay um so now in hindsight had I spoken to the right people got got some advice um mm. that um I would have made a better decision yeah 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 so yeah. you've got one of those ever yeah got one of those kick me stories <laughs> yeah 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 and and it, it actually gets worse because i i sold it at the wrong time too um so so big learning curves at such a young age you know 22 to be investing um and you're doing it because family or, or um friends are saying to to purchase yeah, yeah. that's yeah. good like it's good you had that that jolt but pity you you know at least got you on the run but yeah pity yeah, yeah buy yeah else for you and then yep. um, so think about your so for people at the beginning of their investment journey and you probably um, offered a little bit of that but what advice or insight would would you offer and I guess you know from someone that started out so young that was passionate really pulled their resources so I love you know the fact that your family collaborated together um, when was the the change for you or when was the um, what was the some of the defining moments and maybe some advice you can can offer someone in a similar situation to yourself at the moment? Look, it really is the education. Um, you know, being really informed. Um, and when I when I say informed or educated, it's it's reading books, surrounding yourself with people who are actually successful with investing. Mm. You know, um, Mm. surrounding yourself with, with people who are where you want to be and then asking questions and then educating yourself mm. um, because I, I've learned now you know you know where are the better locations what to look for in a property um, mm. thanks to Sam as well <laughs> um, and a lot of my reading <laughs> and podcasts I listen to Sam every morning <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so definitely the education is huge and having a mentor who's actually already successful with investing, Mm, you know, taking the guesswork out of, you know, what you need to do. Mm. It always surprises because it's, you know, there's so much information out there, but it always Mm. surprises me how many people buy property without actually understanding the principles as well or why they take advice from, you know, there's a great saying, don't take advice from, you wouldn't take swimming lessons from a drowning person. Um, So why? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I think too, like when if you go back 20, 25 years ago, mm. when I started investing, we didn't have access to to Google, to, to so many companies like um, obviously Positive Real Estate or any other companies where we could get the education. Yeah, so you were relying on yeah. friends or neighbours or, you know. The media. <laughs> well, the media, yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, it was the media that we listened to when we decided to sell that investment property in um, Mount Drew just after the GFC. And mm. we came away with probably after we paid capital gains tax, maybe a 50K net profit mm. after holding it for seven years. Yeah. You yeah. know, so um, another really big lesson for anyone who's starting out is, you know, property is the the long game. You know, mm. don't think about buying an asset and, and um, you know, thinking it's going to grow every single year. You know, mm. hold on to that asset and um, buy well to begin with and, and don't sell it. Mm. Yeah, ride the waves, so to speak. Because yeah, now if I had have kept that property, it'd be, be over a million dollars. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> How much? Yeah, so again, I kicked myself again because of that one. <laughs> yeah, at least you're laughing about it now. So I'm sure what can you do? What can you do? Wince a little bit. <laughs> That's right. What can you do? Uh, and how much did you pay for it? Sorry, you bought it for one um no i think that one uh sorry because i bought another asset in narang in queensland actually uh another not another good area that that one was 184 yeah gosh it's strange to think that we paid under 200 for these assets um mm-hmm. that one in mount Drew, it must have been around the 220 mark because it was on um close to 1400 square meters yeah wow yeah, and at the time, the agent did say to us that it had development potential. Mm-hmm. And that was another lesson that we learned because we should have checked with the council first. Um, the frontage wasn't wide enough to develop because right. that was the plan. We were going to to build um, three or four townhouses. That was the big the big plan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and yeah. and that, that didn't eventuate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a pity. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So <laughs> do your do your research, education. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So one of the can you share? You may have already done this, but um, this may be be the one. Um. But can you share the biggest mistake or learning? Um. Over your how long have you been investing for? 20, 20 plus years investing. So yeah. what would yep. be your your biggest learning? Um. With with that, or your biggest mistake that you've made. Definitely the biggest is, um, besides education, I guess um, listening to the media and feeling quite fearful. Mm -hmm. Um, And then at the time, you know, obviously quite young, early 20s. um, So I still, I guess, took advice from my mother and and she felt quite fearful listening to the media as well. And then we sold definitely at the wrong time. Mm, Yeah. 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 I should have um, just held on to it. <laughs> and biggest regret selling. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about some positive experiences. What's been your one of your your best assets or the best property advice ever, you know, given to you that you've that you've applied in your um in your life? I think probably the most rewarding and challenging as well would be um in 2016, I decided to um, build my own home mm-hmm. as a owner builder mm-hmm. self. Right, right. And <laughs> yeah. you're still married, so well done. Yes, yeah. No, well, my husband's very easy. He's like, whatever you think. So it's it makes it easy for me. <laughs> so um that was that was challenging. I learned a lot. Um, I know when I first started the build, I had a spreadsheet and I had a timeline of when each tradesperson was was uh, <laughs> going to be rocking up to the property and that wow. that went out the door I think the first week um, mm-hmm. but the biggest learning from that was 
besides the fact that I really enjoyed, you know, the design aspect of it and planning all the, you know, the joinery and and all the the living areas and what have you, have you um, knowing that I could manufacture equity mm. in the property, um, that was that was a really rewarding for me. Mm. That was yeah. a massive win because I um, started. Well, we, we we purchased the land in two thousand and sixteen, and by the time it was complete, it was twenty. 20 end of 2020 mm -hmm. um, and um, when I got it valued at the bank it, it was it had about 800k equity in it nice mm. so from that I could see the power of doing it myself even though I probably got a few gray hairs from it um, <laughs> mm. um, that was a massive win for me mm. the power of building and building that yeah thing. yeah and and understanding too that it doesn't have to have marble and you know all the high-end um finishes but the layout's important mm. how a family lives in a home where where the spaces are like that was really important the light um so little things that don't cost a lot add a big add a lot of value to it to the property yeah absolutely um, yeah and sam talks about that a lot in his podcast yeah. as well yeah so it's getting the right bones and the right structures definitely. and that so, definitely sure. yeah yeah and understanding how you like to live and mm -hmm. creating those spaces where you want to live you want you I look forward to coming home each day because I love the space mm, nice yeah. yeah so that was a big win for me <laughs> good good nice to, and yeah certainly since after if you were lucky to get finished end of 2020 I'm sure the market's been very very kind to you through then as well so building oh gosh, if I was to build the same house I'm, I'm sure it, it would be mm -hmm. close to double in construction costs yeah, yeah. Look, I am fortunate that a lot of my family with a Maltese background, <laughs> they're either cabinet makers or, you know, they're in the joinery space or, you know, mm -hmm. they're very handy with tools. So that helps. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Great, great tribe around you and people around Yes, you. definitely. Yeah. Good, good. And yeah. your uncle that encouraged you to investing, um, is he still around? Is he, you know? Yeah, so... Um, all my family have been in kitchens <laughs> so he's still in, in the kitchen business I think now his daughters run that business um but he's actually yeah he's definitely he's like a multi-millionaire yeah yeah um he's still property investing they've done commercial and residential um and now he does um beef as well the wagyu beef he's got yeah. cows in Japan and cows here and <laughs> he's got cattle everywhere so He's sort of diversified his portfolio with cattle and, um, <laughs> and investments. <laughs> we learn Dilla by the sounds of it, but that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, but um, he's proud of the of yeah of the family, and it's a great lesson too that he could part into um, wisdom on on his family as well. Yeah, so, yeah. and I think that's where I I I feel. Um, I know Sam talks a lot about um, the the flight to quality, and I can really appreciate when I look at our, you know, the the investment properties through positive real estate. Um, I recognise good quality um, mm. because I've come from that background of of the good quality joinery, and um, it does definitely make a difference. Meticulous detail. Yeah. 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 That's really important. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, so great to have you on here. Thanks for sharing your story. Um, so, you know, classic podcast question, you know, certainly a lot of lessons which we'll dissect, but a classic podcast question to wrap up today's interview is if you could go back to back in time and meet your your younger self, so younger Michelle, um, yep. 15, 16 year old, we you know, working three jobs to help with your mum and, you know, everything in between. Um, when you're beginning, what would your, be given your advice, your experience, say, what advice would you give to your younger self? Just don't stop, you know, yeah. um, and with every, um, you know, with it, there's, there's a, there's a lesson in everything that we do um don't feel fearful if you've got um all the facts and the advice and, and the education and support um just take that chance because you only get one chance you know to give it a go um and and, and just don't be fearful because look I wasn't fearful I was probably naive uh, <laughs> but I did things and now in hindsight I go well I've learned a lot from that mm -hmm. so 
I think everything in, in life is either a lesson or a gift. So that's how I like to look at things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, especially when there's a challenge, it's like, what lesson is I meant to learn from this? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. And it's a way, you know, I mean, credit to you and, and pushing past it. It's really the way by teaching and coaching people, and I'm sure you've found this as well in your, your health and wellness and your fitness journey. It's really how people respond to situations and how people find this the path going, you know, go moving <laughs> that can really define your outcome their outcome um so just yes. like your uncle I'm sure everything you know hasn't been smooth failing but at least you didn't give up and keep going and, yep. yeah yep. Yep. Look, everyone I guess everyone has challenges in life it's, it's how you deal with those challenges you know how do you overcome that obstacle or how do you work out how to get around it um you know if you've got your health and your family I mean you're already blessed anyway yeah. um, so everything else is a bonus yeah definitely mindset is everything mm. definitely is <laughs> you got to keep just, working on it i just saw bruce lee in the background there it's like <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> yeah. yeah mindset is very big and i think i learned that from my mum. Mm. you know even all those years ago like she always had that that very positive mindset there was always a way to work through things yeah um, and I think collectively as a family, I mean, obviously I didn't have my father, but the three of us worked through things together. Um, mm -hmm. And I think when you go through those situations, you become more resilient. So when something does come up in life, it's like, oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I've gone through worse before. That's fine. <laughs> Just something else to challenge me today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You don't get rattled by very much. You're very easy. Yeah. Quite easy. Yeah. Going. Yeah. 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 Not much. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Great life lesson. Well, thank you so much um, for sharing your story. Uh, I find it really, really interesting. And I learned a little bit more about you today as well. So that's yeah. great. Thank you so much um, for sharing your story with everybody. Um, and I'll see you. Yeah, pleasure. And we'll see you, see you soon. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Thanks, Louise. See you. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to Property Investor Tales. Remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops. As you can guess, I love hearing people's property investor tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with me via email at propertyinvestortales at positivementor.com.au. We would also love your feedback and I would appreciate a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember, you can watch all of these podcasts over on YouTube at Positive Mentor or at positivementor.com.au. Until then, take care, happy investing.